Okay, so now let's talk about the the AWS services that uh, we are going to use uh, in for the remaining um, of this semester. So first, we will use a data lake. So as we said earlier, so data lake is a centralized repository that allow you to store structured, some structured, and also unstructured data at any scale. So uh, the benefit of the data lake is that it's it can serve as a single source of the truth so that you don't need you don't need low uh, you no longer need to okay find some data from uh, computer a and also find data from computer b so all you need is just a data lake that contains all the data uh, you may need and also you can access it from anywhere of the world okay um it can store any type of data, so like structured, semi-structured, and also unstructured. Data lake is mostly used by AI and also artificial intelligence and also machine learning. So uh, we also have intro to machine learning and also our AI class, uh, so that you will see that how we can use data lake to store as to serve as a data source. So basically, the data lake and also uh, data warehouse are all their data containers. Uh, so data warehouse can only store their data that are structured, and that is best used to perform to for the data visualization and also for the BI tools. And the data lake is more flexible, so that can host data from anywhere, and also can host data for any type of the purposes. Uh, for example, they can use for the data analysis and also for machine learning and also AI, etc. So data lake is more flexible. Um, so the service that we're going to use on AWS is called S3 of the simple storage service. Uh, so AWS Amazon S3 is a storage for the internet. So that is a solution of the data lake. And it is the best place to store all of your semi-structured and also unstructured data. So for example, if you have structured data, uh, I think the database is still uh, the, the best solution. So the database is still best for structured data. So if you have semi-structured and also especially unstructured data, so data lake is definitely the first choice. You can store data for any type, any amount of data, at any time and all from anywhere of the anywhere of the internet. So Amazon S3 organized data into different folders, which they call buckets. Okay, so buckets are the logic containers that help you to organize help you organize your data. And then within each bucket, you can create multiple buckets. Within each bucket, you can create folders or you can upload the data directly. So all the data stored in S3 are called objects. This is different from the Python object. So the object can be a TXT file, um, can be an image, can also be a video. Okay, so it can be any type of data. And we will save that uh, during today's lab. So this stored the, the object and so that you file itself and also mental data. So mental data is a data about the data. So for example, the size of the file, the type of the file, etc. So object can include the, the data itself and also the mental data. And the buckets are just the logic containers uh, for your objects. OK, so that is S3, which is solution for the data lake. The Python editor we are going to use is called Jupyter Notebook. So we have used Cloud9 uh, for uh, nine weeks. But starting from this week, we are switched to the Notebook. So Notebook is an open source web application that allow you to create and share documents, which include the live code, equations, and also visualizations, and also the text message. OK, so this may sound very fancy, but Notebook is now become very popular, especially in data science. 
So you can use notebook to do a lot of stuff like data cleaning, transformation, simulation, modeling, visualization, and also especially machine learning. OK, so when we are training the machine learning models, so um, using Python, so uh, almost 90 percent time that we are using notebook. Uh, so this is uh, how the notebook look like. So here you can see you can define the syntax, the title, you can write your paragraph, you can even have the equations, uh, URLs. And here you can also run your Python code. OK, and even you can have the output of your Python code and the visualizations will also be can be displayed on your notebook. So notebook is a very convenient way that you can communicate with other persons about your Python code and also about your project. So starting from this week, we will use a GP notebook to write your Python code, to do your analysis, to create your visualizations, and also to write down your analysis. So, so that's why that we're going to use notebook. We know that a notebook is a free open source. However, so you can install the notebook on your own local computers, or we can use SageMaker. Okay, uh, so SageMaker is an Amazon service that is fully managed, so that we don't need to um, worry about the hardware about SageMaker. So the reason that we, the SageMaker is designed to train to build and also to deploy the machine le machine learning models. OK, so that is the purpose of the SageMaker, so AWS SageMaker. So they are not used to, to for Python programming only. So that is designed for someone that use Python to build, to train, and also to, to deploy their machine learning models. We are using SageMaker because SageMaker can host notebook. OK, so because SageMaker can host notebook. So um, so we will use S3 to host our data. And also we use SageMaker, which will host our Jupyter notebook. OK, so and they are all on AWS. OK, so that is logic of using those two services. And to use those two services, <laughs> we need to in understand another one. So that is IAM, which is Identity and also Access Management. So IAM basically controls the access for users and also for services. So IAM is a way that we can uh, allow people to access, for example, your AWS resources. Or you can allow the, some AWS resources to access other AWS resources. OK, so in our case, OK, so we have everything that in, on AWS. We have our S3, OK, so that is to, to host our data. And we have the SageMaker, OK, which has a notebook, GP notebook. So if we want to use GP Notebook to access the data from S3, we need IAM, OK, to authorize a notebook, OK, so that we, we need allow notebook to access data in S3. So we have to use IAM to authorize notebook so that notebook will have the permission to access data from S3 or they can also write it into S3. Okay, so that is IAM. And finally, so the PIP tool. So uh, in Cloud9, we know that the PIP tool is a command line that used to manage, to install the Python libraries. So in Cloud9, we can uh, type the PIP tools in the terminal, so PIP install, and you can install the, uh, the Python library. And however, in notebook, we can install the pass use the PIP tools in a notebook directly. OK, so we can use PIP tools directly in a notebook. And the syntax is that in a notebook, we just type the exclamation mark, 
now the pip install and next you just type the Python library that you want to install and that Python library will be installed into that notebook instance. Okay, so that is a tiny difference uh, by use how to use pip tools in the cloud line and also in the uh, notebook. Okay, so in notebook we can run the pip tools directly in the notebook.